This is the Power of Teen America podcast, and today we've got an interview with the 57 kilo university national champion and best lifter, Bella Vargas. This three time national champ will be making her debut on the U.S. national team at the Junior World Championships in Romania on August 25th. She talks about her performance at University Nationals, what she's doing to get ready for the World Championships, the fun differences between equipped and raw, and how she balances being a full time student athlete. We are just days out from the Sub Junior Junior World Championships in Romania starting August 24th, where we'll have a stacked team to compete against the world's best. Our media team will be there doing press conferences, interviews, behind the scenes coverage, and more, so be sure to subscribe on our YouTube and follow us on Instagram at PowerTeam underscore America so you don't miss any of it. We've also got registration live for all of our national championships in 2024, which are pinned to the top of the events tab on our website. Go there and get registered now before all the spots are gone. While you're there, show your support for the squad. Get a PowerTeam America shirt or hat from the PA store, link below. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for the continued partnership with PowerTeam America. If you're looking to compete in drug tests at PowerTeam, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to PowerTeam-America.com and become a member. Now let's get to this interview with the reigning, equipped, 57 kilo university national champion, Bella Vargas. What's up? We got the reigning 57 kilo university national champion, Bella Vargas in the house. How are you doing, champ? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, we just got back from NAPF and we're like, I got home for six days and then I'm going to fly to Romania. So living the life. Nice. Awesome. Traveling the world, Mr. Worldwide. L- living the powerlifting life. You know, what more can I ask for? Getting to hang out with the strongest people in the world. Yeah, for sure. That's why my Instagram is stronger than Paul, because everyone I hang out with is stronger than me. <laughs> no, not even. No, got to give yourself some credit. No, nah, even the even the 57 uh, kilogram girls are stronger than me. So it's all good. But one day, one day I'll get there. But um, so are you a three time national champion? Is that did I count it right? I am a three time national champion. Yes. Yes. You got that right. And you're a junior because you're about to go to ju- the junior world championships in Romania. So mm-hmm. how does it feel to have so many, you know, championships under your belt already as such a young lifter? How old are you right now? I'm 23. I turned 23 years old after the day after um, nationals in Florida. Okay. And I got, ce- I got to celebrate in Disney World for the first time. So that was really That's- fun. That's right. I saw that. Um, so what's your relationship with Disney stuff? Um, because I think, did you have like Disney bows and Disney <laughs> shirts and stuff going on in University Nationals? I definitely had the Disney bow and I had Disney themed nails. Um, I'm a big Disney fan girl. I mean, my hype movie before I compete is literally um, Mulan because of the song, I'll Make a Man Out of You. And so um, that's always my hype movie. And so I was super excited to tie that all back with like powerlifting and then Disney World. And I'm like, this is going to be easy. This is going to be a great time. So I was really excited. Yeah, I remember talking to you and it was like, that's such a cliche after you win a, a big game and football or whatever. It's like, we're going to Disneyland. And you like literally were going to Disneyland like the next day or like the same day. Yeah, it was really fun. It was a surprise. I didn't think I was able to go after I competed, but my partner, my mom surprised me. So awesome awesome birthday gift also awesome birthday gift to myself um being first place so that was cool yeah you came and you showed out for sure um we'll get into that into the details of of your performance and whatnot um as we go in but i mean how does it feel to have so much success as a junior already it feels really good um i mean i'm just having a fun time like i'm a student at first and so i think what keeps me motivated is just challenging myself outside of the classroom space and so a way to challenge myself is competing, um, losing weight because I'm not, I don't naturally sit at 57. I sit like around maybe 130 pounds. So I got to cut a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's fun. Like, it just feels really good to like go in, have a good time, like making sure the other girls are going to have a good time. I'll fist bump them. Like, I'm not trying to be that, that mean competitor, like, Oh, I'm going to kick your ass and things like that. No, they've all worked hard. I worked hard. So I all, I want us all to have a good time, but it feels really good to come out first place and know that like I, I earned it and I, and I did well. So, yeah. That's, that's great. I mean, and now you're uh, one week out basically from the, the junior world championships in Romania. Um, it, the competition starts on August 24th. It goes through September 3rd, but you're competing on Friday, August 25th, I believe. And it's yeah. at 9 a.m. Romania time, which is probably like 2 a.m. Eastern time. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked it up and it's like plus seven hours from, from Eastern time. So 
be 2 a.m. That I think that's like what 1 a.m. Central time then for for your friends and family. That yeah, I believe them. so. Yeah, a lot of my friends and family Central times so around one, two in the morning for sure. A lot yeah. of them said they're gonna stay up, but I'm like, yeah, sure, but we'll see about that. That's not too hard to stay up till one. It's those ones that are like at three, four a.m. You're just like, it's yeah, it's too early. It's too late to stay up. It's too early to get up that early. It's like. Nah, I'm gonna have to catch a replay. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we'll just watch it the next day. But I have a lot of friends and family that are <clears throat> thinking of are, are already planning on tuning in and maybe watch parties. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, Central Time is great. 1 a.m. I'm in Mountain Time, um, so that would be midnight. And then out on the on the West Coast, it's 11. That's that's like around the time like I have uh, the main event and a boxing match would start at like 11 o'clock. That's perfect. So probably get okay. a lot of your West Coast people tuning in live. Yes, super excited. And what are they going to be commenting in the chat? What's your Here's motto? A bow. Here's a bow. <laughs> the girl with the bow. Like, that's basically it. That's basically what I'm going to say. Or like, her bow's on crooked or something. Fear the bow. They're just going to yeah. be saying fear the bow like crazy, um, which is, which is going to be great. I can't wait to see the chat just like flooded with that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have you do some things like um, we're, we're still planning out exactly what we're going to do, but um, we were trying to do these pre um, pre competition press conferences, you know, where we could ask you some questions live from Romania and people can tune in and we'll try to get those at a, at a reasonable time so people can watch. And then we'll do it after the competition as well. We'll interview you. Uh, we'll have a, a full press conference thing set up so people can ask questions there as well. And then um, if possible, we're, it's always like logistics. We're not exactly sure like what we're going to get when we show up there, but we like to do pregame show as well. Like, uh, like in the uh, starting around when weigh-ins happen. So that would mm -hmm. be like probably like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, even central time. Um, mm -hmm. where we can say stuff like, oh, you know, she made way in this, what her openers are and everything like that. And then, you know, you have that two hours until you lift. So yeah, for that first hour, you're kind of just chilling around, not really doing a whole lot. You can swing through and, um, and, and give some shout outs and make sure to tell everyone to be coming yeah. to fear the bow in the, in the chat, in the, on the Olympics, you, uh, YouTube account and all that kind of stuff. So awesome. that'll be fun. We're yeah. trying to do as much media stuff as we can. And then we'll, um, try to pull in like who uh, whatever lifters are are done lifting or are like three or four days out that are there early to like join mm -hmm. in some of these conversations like on our pregame shows and ask questions yeah. at the press conferences and things like that but okay so we're like about a week out how is training going how are you feeling I'm feeling really good I'm only I mean my weight's been ranging between like I, I'm like at weight or like two pounds over and I've been eating pretty big for like the past two weeks like big like like I'll be going to Chipotle. I'll be eating some big tofu bowls. Like even my boss at Lift ATX, like, damn, no wonder why you're looking so swole. I'm like, gotta have those protein and carbs in. So, um, but overall, training has been going really good. I mean, I've been training out like a hundred and plus degree weather in my equipment. So I'll train a little bit, like warm up raw, hop into my gear. I'm sweating like crazy, but we're still getting the job done at the end of the day. But it's been a real fun time. Good vibes at my gym with my partner before he starts his grad program. And then um, Sandra, like my coach, she'll, she lives a little bit um, out, like she lives a little bit out of Austin, but she'll come on Sundays and seeing her always makes my Sunday morning. So it's been really fun. Training's been going really good, picking up some heavy weight. And I recently hit a PR on deadlift. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. So it sounds like you're geared up and ready to show out in Romania mm -hmm. um, and how everything feeling good health wise and everything like that. You got any nagging injuries or anything, or are you feeling like beat up at this stage in prep a little bit or, or what? I think this week I definitely felt it a little bit more in my body. I was a little bit tired, just trying to get enough sleep. But I mean, I think overall, as long as I fully rested, once I get off the plane in Romania, just chilling in the hotel room, like I think I'll be a okay. I'm probably going to watch Disney movies if I'm being completely honest <laughs> That's just, yeah I'm thinking I'm like hopefully I can bring my Apple TV because I'm definitely trying to watch some shows or movies while I'm over there yeah for sure you have to get into the tech I'm not a very techie person but I know uh there's like some issues like with Netflix over there like and mm. what what is available when you're traveling like this you might have to mm -hmm. use a VPN to pretend like you're back in Austin so you can get all your yeah. same content and whatnot um when do you get out there how many days early so I leave Monday morning and just because of the time difference, I arrive Tuesday um, 
I think really early afternoon, like maybe uh, 12 or 1 p.m. on Tuesday. And then okay. I'll arrive at the hotel like fairly early afternoon. And then I'm chilling until Friday. So, yeah, yeah I get so, there fairly so, early. So you'll have Tuesday, half of the day, and then you have Wednesday, Thursday to totally like just chill mm -hmm. out and everything and then and then compete on Friday. Yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, what are you doing? differently for this competition this is your first international competition is that right mm -hmm. yes it's my first international one so i mean what are you doing like as far as to prepare for the travel and the time change difference and stuff like that mm -hmm. i mean i've traveled um besides from piloting i've traveled to europe before a couple of times mm -hmm. i mean just before i got um, the invitation to compete on the international level i was studying abroad in london so mm -hmm. um I mean, I've traveled and time differences don't really make a big difference on my body as long as I'm able to sleep on the plane or just have a couple snacks and then definitely dressing up cozy when I'm on the plane. So yeah. nothing crazy different. Um, I'm just trying to figure out this, like what type of snacks and food I'm going to bring over because I don't know if I'll do a check bag. I'm doing carry on. So I'm trying to get creative of like what food I can bring because you know, we're just, just trying to make sure I'm getting my protein in and my, like, just like all the macros, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing is just like bringing, um, basically everything uh, that you need leading into the meat. So you're not eating super weird stuff. It sounds mm -hmm. like from the group chat and everything like that, that Romania and the city we're going to Cluj. Um, I was actually just speaking with my friend from Romania last night. She said, it's like the Silicon Valley of Romania. Mm -hmm. So it's like pretty high tech. Um, nice. Pretty, pretty nice place yeah and mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have any problem getting like basic food like rice and pasta mm -hmm. and stuff like that um, but okay, of course good. of course you know you want to have a backup plan and like bring your own mm -hmm. stuff just in case but it'll be nice if we can get like fresh stuff when we're there yeah for sure so I'll definitely get creative like this coming weekend before I fly out of like what foods I should be packing that way I'm just it, like not stressing out while I'm over there and plus like you know when you know your city you're comfortable like which stores you want to go to and like what yeah. items you want and what food you should be eating before a meet so yeah just because I'm going on the international level I try not to treat all my competitions different I mean pretty yeah. like like standard of like me I mean I've gone to nationals different states before traveling and so uh, when I was an officer for my Longhorn piloting team I recognize that a lot of the student athletes never traveled before. So I did like a cheat sheet of like what they can pack, like what should be in their um, check bags and like what just like what can they bring on the plane essentially and like what I food items to like that would be great to have handy. So, yeah, that's good. It sounds like you're like a savvy veteran, even though you've, you've spent a lot of time overseas and stuff, but even though you've never mm -hmm. competed overseas, so it should be a cakewalk for you. Um, obviously, Heck yeah. Obviously you're a star and you're smashing huge weights. So it's like, you know, probably not going to be, even if you come in a little bit like dehydrated or whatever, like you don't have your proper meals or whatever, you're still going to win. So it's no big deal. Oh my uh, gosh. No, I need to be hydrated. Don't say you have, <laughs> even if you're dehydrated. No, we're staying hydrated at all times. No, water no, no. is the easiest thing to come by. Like we get bottled water over there and, um, uh, I, I know mm -hmm. it's safe to drink the water over there too and everything. I'll be drinking it for days before you even get there. So I'll oh, let you know. Heck yeah. But, um, and that's a cool thing is like being part of a team is that some people are flying out. Like I know, um, Captain Cargill is flying out like today or tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Uh, and so mm -hmm. she'll already be there. Cause I think she's competing a couple like the day before you or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we'll kind of get the lay of the land. The, some of the coaches are getting out there early. And so mm -hmm. in the group chat, we'll like let everyone know like, hey, here's the nearest grocery store. Here's the nearest mm -hmm. uh, place to go for, for dinner or something like this. Or yeah, I've been drinking the water. It's all good. You know, things like that. Um, because you never know, like even if I drink it and I'm good, that doesn't mean it's going to be good for everyone. So probably yeah, just stick to sure. bottled water. Stick to bottled water until mm -hmm. it's over. Till the, yeah, till just to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> And then we can, once you're done competing, we can go out and like risk everything and like try like the crazy food and like <laughs> drink. Yes, exactly. Drink whatever. That's the number one thing I want is to be a risk taker and just try all the different foods after I compete. Yeah. Do you have any plans of traveling around in Romania at all? Oh, actually, this is crazy. This was my original plan. So as soon as I was going to like get off the platform, I was trying to look for flights to go to Greece. Oh, wow. And the <laughs> 
I was gonna try to go to Greece, hang out on the beach. I was thinking Poros, Greece, since I've been there before. Lovely place. I love the beach. The food is so good and affordable and amazing. Yeah. And the drinks, oh my God, I've just been craving a margarita so bad <laughs> even during yeah. this prep. But anyway, um, but I think it's too crazy of a travel um, because also like the banquet is on Sunday. So anyway, that plan is out of the way. But I'm still trying to see, like, what can I do in Romania? So I'm still trying to figure that out. Probably look into it more this weekend before I fly out. Just if I want to book a ticket and hop yeah. on a hop on a train and then come back or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same way as you. I basically, like, just, like, Googled Cluj, like, yesterday and, like, talked to my friend from Romania. Uh -huh. and she listed some places that I already forgot. But I'll, I'll text her, like, when I land and be like, where are those places that you said I should try? Um, mm -hmm. that's how I am like a very last minute kind of uh, traveler, but I know mm -hmm. Transylvania isn't super far away and that's like where Dracula is from. And like, there's, there's, um, she oh mentioned a gosh. couple, of, she mentioned a couple of other cities that are like pretty close by that are like very, um, I think she described it as like Hungary, uh, Hungo German or something like, like kind of Hungarian Ooh. German style towns mm -hmm. that are like very like quintessential, uh, old oh, that's school awesome. architecture yeah yeah you definitely exactly. got to give me that list because i'm super into yeah. the german culture and then i'm just trying to live my twilight dream because i'm bella so if i get to see some vampires let's do it right oh there's like vamp yeah. i'm sure there's going to be vampire stuff she said probably even in clues you can go to like see some like dracula shows and stuff like that yeah. oh my goodness i was confused why my friend the other day because i was talking to him and he's like oh yeah don't forget your garlic and like your uh -huh. and i was like what are you talking about and he's like twilight don't you remember twilight when they were Romanian, I was like, oh my goodness, I completely yeah. forgot. So anyway, I'm going to try to live my Twilight dream while after I compete. And then like even pre-Twilight, um, like the whole Dracula like thing that's been mm -hmm. around forever is like you apparently mm -hmm. like Transylvania, which is like a nearby city. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of, there's cool stuff, but she did say like Bucharest is pretty far away, which is the capital. Mm -hmm. That's like the big, the big city um the really big one and it's that one is apparently like a pretty decent drive like maybe five six hours away but oh, romania okay. has cool stuff she was saying like like in the south is like black sea in the north is like like ger very german stuff so it's like mm -hmm. but you know we only have so much time but and i like that you're saying you're making a point to come back for the banquet because i think i know why you want to be there because you're probably you're going to be in the running to win best lifter so you're going to no, want to be there to collect the trophy <laughs> No, I have a cute dress that has bows on it. <laughs> I just want to show off my dress. No, I'm just kidding. That's hilarious. I, um, I've been dressing very poorly at the banquets. I might have to bring a pair of pants for once. Yes. Uh, you better step up your game for this banquet for us, please. Yeah. For We're the juniors. Y'all are so much more judgmental than, uh, the open lifters, but, um, uh, but yeah, we'll, so we'll see. Um, it, I don't know. I have so much camera gear and like tech related stuff to pack. It's like, it's hard for me to waste weight on uh, clothes and stuff, but yeah. I'll definitely have my pink slides. Um, Perfect. That's all you need available. <laughs> so um, were you invited to be on the, so speaking of international competitions and stuff like that, were you invited to be on the open equipped team going to Lithuania mm -hmm. later in the year? I was invited, but um, I didn't accept my invitation because I am currently going into my second year in grad school. I'm studying social work here at UT Austin. And so um, it just would conflict with like my studies. And also like I run on financial aid and scholarships. And so, I mean, just for this trip alone, I'm, I accepted my invitation and I was like, crap, how are we going to pay for this? So let's do a fundraiser. <laughs> and so I started selling t-shirts. I sold about 86 t-shirts and so yeah and they're $30 each so I made like a like a lot of good money for like to cover my flights to cover my my track suits and like the hotels and so that was really awesome and then outside of that people were donating and so I think it's really awesome to have a lot of support from like friends and family and also like my host family from London they did a big donation to me because I got really That's close cool. to them so yeah, but other than that, like, I won't be able to compete just because it's around midterms and final season and, mm -hmm. you know, student athlete, not athlete student. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, you got to get your priorities right. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. 
um, grades and that kind of stuff are more important. It's cool that you're able to do this because it's in the summer still, or mm-hmm. near, the beginning, near the beginning of the semester and stuff when things aren't quite as serious in the semester, you know, like November mm-hmm. is like crunch time, right? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm already, sk- I'm already skipping the first week of school. So I mean, I already yeah. contacted all my professors and all of them were super cool about, about it. And I also sent them like a picture of me with like my award, like, Hey, proof I'm an athlete you know I'm a power lifter and I compete yeah. and so but a lot of the professors were really excited to like hear like how the competition goes and then also just getting to know more of, of like my background in the in the sport of powerlifting. so my professor is all super supportive first week is super slow so yeah. I'm syllabus, not worried about it yeah syllabus week right yeah so I'm so. not too worried mm-hmm um, so tell us a little bit about what you're studying then, like while we're on the subject, uh, what, what are you getting your degree in? Yeah, so I'm studying social work. Um, I, for my undergrad, I actually studied communications and leadership and I had my minor, I got my minor in social work and communications and social change. And then senior year of undergrad, I applied for the social work program and got accepted. And now I'm finishing off my second slash last year in the program and also I'm a graduate assistant here at UT. So I'm working in an office called Texas Lead. They're the coolest office that house a lot of awesome leadership programs for students. And so a lot of our conversations just revolve around leadership and how to bring out like, like the, like the skills are there. We're just helping them bring out that language. And I think we have some pretty cool programs to like support them and to increase their self-efficacy as well. Yeah. Very cool. Um, uh, basically, you're saying leadership a lot and stuff, and I think we need we need leaders in powerlifting. Um, mm-hmm. We can probably learn a lot from you. So hopefully, you'll always have a, a little bit of time, make a little time for the powerlifting community to lead us yeah. into the future. For sure. No, I can, I'll be more than happy to host a workshop for y'all. Perfect. Yeah. And speaking of powerlifting stuff, um, are you a fan? Like, uh, are you a fan of the sport? Do you? watch powerlifting competitions and like do you get like super nerdy into like who's the the best in this weight class and that that weight class and that sort of thing I mean I'm definitely passionate and a big fan of the sport but for like for my personal reasons and but I'm not a big follower on like oh who's the best of the best in the 57s or who's the best of the best of like other like in the male weight classes and female weight classes um I just do it for like I said earlier that I do it for, for me to have fun and to challenge myself as a, like outside of the classroom space. And that's why I love to continue um, going into competition and like just getting my mind ready for like a competition setting. Um, but other than that, I'm not too big or nerdy when it comes to like following people's stats and numbers. I'm just trying to focus on my numbers at the end of the day and my strengths and like where like where can I like improve on like certain lifts in my technique? And so it's like, um, I can follow y'all and enjoy y'all's posts, but I'm not going to be super big and nerdy. Like, oh my gosh, like they just did this big, crazy lift. I just like, yeah. you know, awesome. Like you deserved it and you did amazing. So, but yeah. You kind of catch up with what what's going on, like just based off of social media and stuff, as opposed to like, you're not going to stay up till 4 a.m. to like watch um the open world championships in malta or anything like that oh wait sorry was that like was that a question <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm just okay, saying like, like because and because you got you're so busy like you've got other mm-hmm. like real life priority like you're nerdy about your graduate school stuff like not about yeah. going super deep and like like you know watching like live streams from mm-hmm. around the world like super late at night and whatnot yeah like i think if i'm fairly if i'm close to you or we have a nice personal connection then of course I'll tune in like for yeah. example like one of my um co- my coaches that used to be on the long run proud thing team Mario Leos like he competed recently he's yeah. Mario yeah and in an APF. I was, yeah so I was like I watched him compete and okay. um because I know him and like we have a personal connection and like like also like all of our friends too like know him and then um in the past I've watched Ian Bell he's mm-hmm. also one of my close friends and I watch him on the international level. And so if I have a personal connection with you, of course, I'm going to tune in and hype you up. But other than that, like, I don't go out of my way to watch that many people just because of like, I want to make sure I'm getting sleep. I want to make sure I'm doing my homework and getting ready to work with my students when it comes to my job or supporting 
people at the gym as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, that makes total sense. Like you're super busy. Mm -hmm. I remember whenever I was in grad school, it was like, I wouldn't have, I I would be staying up till 4am working on papers, not um, watching (laughs) live streams from power stuff around the world. That makes sense for sure. But it's cool. Um, Yeah. Shout out Mario. Um, He did good down in, uh, down in uh, the Cayman Islands. Um, at yeah. the North American championships and he brought like a squad with him too like he had uh Charles Opoco down mm-hmm. there came down there just to cheer him on and stuff so he definitely is a fan favorite and the fact that you mentioned his name it just goes to show like how deep the community is down there in Texas especially yeah so uh, um, I know he did really well his also his partner is like one of the coaches for Longhorn Pilot things so she was over there too so it was really yeah. cool to see like all of them together and doing really well and then Mario like doing awesome on the on the platform yeah, it was great. He was a fan favorite for sure. Um, all right. So getting into it a little bit more, um, you're, you're an equipped lifter and have mm-hmm. you ever done raw at all? Or do you only do equipped? I've only done one raw me. And after that, everyone's like, Oh my God, are you going to come to raw? And I'm like, heck no, no, I'm an equipped lifter. Like by heart forever. I'm even when I'm in my forties, I'm going to do equipped lifting. Even my bones are broken. Like I love that. I'm not, I'm not going raw. I enjoy it. I think it's a great division. I mean, that's why there's two divisions, but Mm -hmm. you know, equip lifting is, um, it's pretty difficult. It's very technical. And so I enjoy it. I love it. It's a whole different mindset once I'm preparing to get into my gear. So give us a little bit of like an elevator pitch for equipped lifting. Like, um, why, because, you know, I think the sport in general has drifted towards the classic and the raw side. I think a lot of our Mm -hmm. audience is on the classic and the raw side. And just give like a little bit of pitch of like, if you're into raw powerlifting and you stay up late and you watch the live streams, like why should they tune in and also watch the equipped live raw, uh, raw streams, live streams? Yeah. So what I always tell people when it comes to equipped lifting, um, it's a whole different ball game. Like your bracing is different. Your technique is different. Your setup is different from when you're doing your volume, like raw. And so um, it's just interesting to see, like, like you'll see competitors like on the raw division. And then like, next thing you know, there's an equip lifter. And what I want people to focus on is like how they're mentally preparing themselves, like all the different, cause you, you have a million cues going on in your head. Like, all right, like my belt needs to be this tight. Cause if it's not, then the straps are going to mess up. And so, or like uh-huh. my suit's going to go up at the bottom or like, something's going to be off or I can fall like equip lifting is very technical very difficult I mean if it was easy a lot more people would be in that division but it's just it's a whole different ball game when it comes to preparing to getting in your suit even like when you're training out in the heat you're like shit like I need to put on this suit out in the heat and like this is so hot and sticky and gross but it's like but I just want people to respect the art and like understand that it's not easy and it's not cheating just because you're putting a lot more weight on your back and on your hands. It doesn't mean like it's easy, you know, it's just very, very technical and you just got to understand and like see like how the cues are. And so I just encourage people when they're watching equip lifters, like to really focus on that, like that lifters face and see them like, getting ready to do that lift. And I think that's pretty awesome to see in every equipped lifter. Definitely. Um, I've been getting more familiar with equipped lifting over the last year, uh, working with powerlifting America and trying to promote the equipped side and the equipped athletes, Mm -hmm. um, because they're every bit as, um, hardcore athletes as anyone on the classic side as well. They do the same, you know, they put in all the hours in the gym, they deserve the same amount of respect. Um, and I'd say like, for, for me, like the two things that really stand out um, so like why you would want to like t- to tell like a general audience, like why we want to tune in and watch, um, one is like the weights are bigger, you know, so mm-hmm. you're going to see, just, <laughs> you're just going to see bigger weights being moved, which is always cool and more interesting. And then the second thing is, is there's like, there's way more drama in equipped. Like there's just like so much, like so many things can go wrong. Like you said, it's super technical. So you're, they're going to see a lot more missed lifts. And I think mm-hmm. like with, when you're watching raw lifting, especially at a super high level, when you have really good coaching, like when the U S national team coaches are there and they're doing their job, right. Their lifters are going to go nine for nine. Like a lot of times, like the really good lifters mm-hmm. go nine for nine or eight for nine. And there'll be some drama around like the last deadlift, like pull for placement or, or whatever, mm-hmm. or, or YOLO a lift or whatever. And you'll see oftentimes they will be eight for eight and then they'll miss. And that's, 
that's not a hundred percent, but like, that's pretty frequent. That's pretty common at the super high level. Whereas in equipped, you have people like miss openers, like miss, yeah. miss a second attempt and then go up and then get it on their third. And like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, there's a lot more missing. There's a lot more, like if you're on bench, if you just like slightly are too far Miss forward Bruce, or too far back yeah. it's like you just boom like and so there's a lot more crash and burn um there's a lot more drama in equipped mm -hmm. and there's just like a lot more like unknown like you don't like are they gonna get it or are they not gonna get it? i don't know like and they could probably mm -hmm. they could miss an opener miss their second attempt and then get their third which i have never happened on the raw side like if you miss an opener um unless it's a technicality if you miss it on strength it's like it's over your day is over you know yeah so for equip lifting it's very it's all about timing too like you gotta make sure you're timing everything right like putting on your wraps like because if you have them on for too long like your legs are gonna go numb or even your wrist wraps and then what else was I gonna say about equip lifting um I was gonna add one more thing but no yeah it's just mainly about the timing and then like, um oh and you're fighting the suit like it's not easy like sometimes if you're squatting like um Sometimes if the weight is too light, it's kind of hard to like go down and hit depth. Like you have to have a decent amount of weight on your back or on your hands when you're benching. And so constantly for warmups and when you're on the platform, you're fighting that suit and people don't get that. Like you're fighting the suit. It's just like, oh, it's just like, it looks painful, but like whatever, but it's, it's pretty, it's hard. It, it hurts and it's hard. And, but it's a really exciting division to watch because like you said, I mean, you're picking up the heavy weight. And I think it's also, you're just at the edge of your seat. Like how you said, like, are they going to get it? Are they not going to get it? They have one more chance to get this. And so oh, equip yeah. lifting is pretty scary. It's a hit or miss. And um, like, sometimes you can't really trust the suit, but you got to fight the suit. And I um, hope and wish people could understand that and see that when they watch the, the equip lifters on the platform. Well, definitely we're going to be covering it. Like, uh, I mean, the whole first week uh, in Romania is equipped. So we're going to be covering it closely. We try to put uh, equip lifters on our Instagram account and like, just show it more and get a little more behind the scenes drama. I think when we are able to ask, like in Scottsdale, we, um, at equip nationals, we were able to talk to the athletes afterwards and do press conferences mm -hmm. with them. And like, they can give a little bit of insight into some of these things like this. So kind of slowly start to educate our audience a little bit more about like what equipped lifting is all about and what makes it mm -hmm. so fun to watch actually. And so like, even if you don't want to do it, you should definitely tune in and watch it because it's definitely like, it's more, it's very exciting. So I love it. Um, yeah. and even in person, it's, it's, it's even crazier in person. Like you just see these benches, just like, just go back, like right onto your face. Mm -hmm. Like, of course you got to have the safeties set and stuff like that. And um, I saw mm -hmm. a guy that was benching, like, I want to say it was like 700 pounds last week at NAPF and his, and his whole, uh, shirt started ripping and like heard all this cracking sound and stuff oh my goodness. as he's benching and just like, you just stuff like this, that like, you just don't It's see. like, Hey, let's not talk about that right before I'm going to go lift on <laughs> <Friday>. <laughs> I'm like, don't, don't my sleeve shirt. Don't rip. Knock, oh knock on wood here. No, yes, you'll be good, please. but it's, all the it's, way. Just, it's just the stuff like this where it's just like, it's just. I don't know. It adds in these more variables that makes it more complicated. Mm -hmm. More things can go wrong, but also more things can go right. And then you can hit a huge, huge number that you wouldn't be able to yeah. um, raw. And the other thing too, is just the adjustments that you can make. So it's like, mm -hmm. you can do little things like with your suit, like pull the bench shirt down more. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't even yeah, know. All I know. The things. No. Yeah, exactly. So you got to know the cues. You got to know how to like adjust the suit. Like, even if like, you miss groove maybe on your first attempt or second it's like okay like where like what spot of your body do we need to adjust your suit or like do we need to crank your shirt more do we need to keep it up like there's just so many things and people just don't really get that like for example I'm the only equipped lifter at my gym right now um and like I'm it's been a really cool experience like teaching people like how to spot or like um maybe how to help me or put on my straps or how to like adjust my belt um but it's been really awesome like the sometimes I'll get crazy stares at my gym. Like, why is this girl wearing this hot ass suit? I don't mean hot, like as in cute and all. I mean like hot as in like <laughs> disgusting hot, like in this heat. And then she's walking like a penguin down the stairs to go lift. And so, but yeah. it's been really cool to have, like have a really good support group and people like actually caring to like watch you and understand like 
what is this division and like why is she doing this and it's really cool because then people like you you pull in a crowd at the gym and then people are just like wow that was like really awesome and also I look crazy because I have a bow on top of my head too so that yeah. also adds you're a great ambassador for equipped um like you make it cool um you're very like hip and happening and everything with your social media you're mm -hmm. you're you know young and everything and and the lift ATX scene seems like so fun and everything as well. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, to bring equipped into that environment, um, it just, I think it makes it look cool, you know, and I think that's what we need. We need more because I think on the equip side too, you have a lot of people that are just like, they don't post very much. They don't, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, there's, it's hard to get angles cause you have all these different spotters and stuff helping you out. Mm -hmm. And, um, I saw a really cool video actually of you and your partner. What's his name? Eric. Yeah. Eric. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I saw a really cool video, a bench video where like, okay, so he's like giving you a handoff and he's spotting you. I'll try to like, say this, like, I'll try to describe it because there's some people that listen. I know. Like, oh yeah. So, so he's, he pulls it off and then, and then he like reaches over and puts like a two board on your mm -hmm. chest. Right. And then you touch it and then you come up and then he like tosses the two board and pulls out like a knee sleeve. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. puts the knee sleeve under and you touch on the knee sleeve and then I think you toss that and then you touch all the way to your chest or something like exactly. what's that all about what so so first of all like shout out to him to Eric because like that was like some hand-eye coordination like some fast movements and mm -hmm. spotting and giving a handoff all at once and hyping me up he's like you got it or like stay tighter so there's just so yeah. many things happening on his end and I'm just like I'm just gonna bench la -di -da -di -da. and then he's doing all these things he's behind working. the bench yeah. yeah he's working he looks but, like one of those like bartenders that's like flipping drinks and stuff like he's like two board and then toss it and then knee sleeve it's he actually cool. does make he actually does make drinks so okay that's probably where the, but um but he's been doing that for a couple of years like sometimes it's just literally him and I like sometimes we don't have a, the like the right support or enough people to help spot or maybe sometimes people don't understand like how to hold the boards for equip lifters um, like where it needs to be placed. We do the boards because um, we're practicing on tension and not like just bringing the bar down. Like you need to have tension and control when you're bringing like the, the weight down to your chest, because if not, like, again, like it's either going to go over your head or you're going to drop it on your stomach. And so it's all about that control and tension. But with Eric, like um, he knows how to hold the boards. He knows how to give me an awesome lift off. And so with him, it's like, I'll just do everything. Cause it's like, I want you to make, I want to make sure you're going to be, your training is going to go well. And I rather just do it all versus like ask somebody else that maybe doesn't, that isn't too familiar with this. So, yeah. So in that specific circumstance, like tell us a little bit more about like what you're working on with, like you're doing the two board and then the knee sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then did you do like all the way to the chest then on the third, was it a triple? I can't remember exactly. I think it was the two board and the knee sleeve. And I believe I went back I think I did two board and then two on the knee sleeve. And so the knee sleeve, honestly, that's more mental. It's like right there by the chest, but it's just like a soft touch to your chest, basically. So um, the two board is just um, to um, basically kind of like a warm up, just mm -hmm. kind of getting used to um, going down, tucking in your elbows, controlling the weight. And then the soft board is like, all right, like, let's see if you can basically do it to your chest at that point. But that's kind of more mental, like having that soft board. It's kind of like it's your chest, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of our superstar, I believe sub junior, maybe she's a junior now, mm -hmm. um, Aaron Anderson had posted, uh, sent a collab to Poverty in America where she was benching, to, she was doing a board press. Like that's what it's mm -hmm. called, right? Board press. Mm -hmm. And they have different thicknesses of the board. So like a two mm -hmm. board is like two inches. Is that right? Or um. I think about like two inches. Yeah. Something mm -hmm. like that. And, and yeah, so they, they, have, they have different, um, um, thicknesses yeah. of the board mm -hmm. that you're touching on. And that's basically controlling like how far you can go down and you're practicing mm -hmm. like different ranges of motion. And like you said, different things like tension and different cues and whatnot. And I just thought the comments were just so hilarious. Cause everyone is just like, what is this? Like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, there, all these questions. And I'm just like, I'm just going to let it run because like, this is, this, this is drawing a lot of attention to it. And a lot of people are about to get educated yeah. from this post on like, on like, what is a board press? And it's mm -hmm. a very common thing in equip lifting. And, but, and I think it's also like when you first get a new bench shirt 
that maybe mm-hmm. it's too tight that you haven't worked it enough to where you can actually mm-hmm. get down to your chest then it gives you like something a target to hit and stuff like that as well so there's a lot of reasons why people use the board press but it's mm-hmm. very common on equipped and it's like not common at all on uh on the classic side of things. So people were like, yeah. well, just going crazy for, and I, I wish that you would send that one uh, as a collab to us because I would have just absolutely like blown up the internet. Like, people oh my would be gosh. like what the hell? Like, Can board I still make that a collab? I don't think you could do it afterwards, but if you have any more oh training gosh. footage, send it for sure because- that was, Yeah, that was crazy. Because it's super cool. Um, and it's just, it's just different stuff. And like, I mean, it's just, I don't know. I think classic um, can just- when you've done it for a while, it can just get very monotonous and boring. And it's what's interesting about equipped is that you have all these different layers to it. Like, like you Mm -hmm. said, like even on the coaching side, like wrapping the person's knees at exactly the right time so -hmm. that they're ready to come out and they're not standing there forever. So it's definitely all about that awareness, the awareness from the coach. And also, I mean, the athlete's goal, I mean, it's just, or the athlete's job is to just sit there and to like chill, be focused, like on how they're going to pick up that weight and the coach like what like what's really awesome from them is like I encourage coaches to like be aware that way like like pay attention to the board that way you can time everything perfectly when it comes to wrapping you or sometimes like people don't like their wrist wraps too tight so it's also like everything's timed like everything needs to be timed with the the wraps the wrist wraps your belt too because like yeah. it's because the bracing like it's tiring to have your belt super tight and then you walk out and you can hardly breathe. And so everything's all about time and awareness. That's it. That's my keywords for y'all time and awareness for quick lifters. Yeah. Even when you put the straps up and stuff, I mean, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. a, like, timing to everything. So um, that's our little talk on equip lifting. I mean, as you can see, like I get excited about it. Um, it's, there's a lot more to it. It's, it's definitely fun. If you like raw lifting, definitely tune in and watch the equip side of things, because um, I think it's, every bit, if not more exciting, um, than, Mm -hmm. than the raw side to watch at least. So, all right, let's go into your year. Um, and let's just like go take us back to university nationals. So Mm -hmm. university nationals was down in Polk County, Florida this year. It was the first time power of America had hosted a university nationals before. Um, it was organized fairly quickly. It wasn't something that was on the calendar of our like super long time. Um, Mm -hmm. and we still had a, a pretty good turnout. We still had a lot of fun down there. We still had an amazing setup and like a, a great, a great mm-hmm. venue and everything like that. So tell us a little bit about how the day unfolded. Well, um, just the day of the comp- day of the yeah, competition. Yeah. Or even leading into it, if you were dealing with anything or anything like kind of give us a story of your mm-hmm. university nat. Um, well, as soon as I saw the competition posted, I come like wanted to just double check like with my coach like hey is it cool if I switch over to Pouting America and like do this competition it seems great like it's in Florida like I gave her all the details she gave me the AOK to do it and but I just remember during training I wasn't as consistent with my training because grad school was kicking my ass and like a lot of other personal things going on too so if I'm being honest like leading up to that competition I was insanely nervous and I was like oh my gosh I just hope and pray that I do okay um, but at the end of the day, like, I just want to have fun. Like, we're here in Florida. We're going to have a good time. My birthday's tomorrow. So, like, it's we're just going to have fun. Like, that is the main goal. Yeah. Um, and so the day of the competition, like, I was jamming out, like, to all. Like, I was back then I was listening to a lot of Y2K music. So early 2000 music, like Crazy in Love, Rihanna, Beyonce, like, all those good vibes. Yeah. And I was just, like, jamming out. And I didn't care if people looked at me crazy, like, the guys or the girls there I'm like I'm like getting ready to compete and then I knew like I looked different compared to some of the others too like I'm like glammed up I have like bold lipstick mascara blush nails a bow like I was like I don't care like this is who I am this is what I do every competition I doll up and I have fun with it and then but the day of the competition it was it was so good like my partner Eric was super supportive like he had all of my warm-ups all ready to go. And this was his first time also ever handling me. So that was also very new um, cool. for him to handle me and competing in Florida. But he did a really awesome job, timed everything right, except for one lift. I was like, wait a minute, that's my name. I'm supposed to be going up right now. He's like, oh crap, get ready. So then that I was for that. that was for dead. I was like, 
but it's okay we got it it was my first attempt and we were a okay but yeah that's right other than that the day of it was such a it was such a good day like i hit prs on squat i've never hit um 391 on squat before bench wasn't my best but um i did get a new bench shirt um for this competition so i'm super excited to pull that out like for on the international stage and then deadlift i hit a big pr too and um, once I got on my third attempt, I was just like talking to myself, like, Hey, like you got this, you worked too damn hard for this. Like you're going to get this lift. And I was just talking so much under my breath and I pulled it. And after that, it just felt so good to be done and know that I, I did well and I, and came out first. And so it was an awesome feeling afterwards. Yeah. I mean, um, you came out first, but even more important, I think is, I think you hit, that was your best, P, uh, total ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you mentioned the squat PR deadlift PR. Um, and, and so a little bit more on the details, like you missed on squat, you hit your opener 165 and then mm -hmm. you missed 175. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, because like, I, I didn't know who you were. Like I had no idea. And I just was like, exactly. Like you said, I saw this, this girl that's all dolled up. She's got the bow. She's got this energy, you know? And I was like, I was just immediately like attracted to your energy. I was like, I was like, she is going to do something. She's like a rock star out here, you know? And then you miss your second squat. And I was like, Oh, maybe she's not a rock star. Maybe, maybe she's about to just hit one hit her opener and just call it a day. And then you go up to 177.5 and come out and, and just smoke it. And, and yeah, you know, it, it, even it my face. Yeah. Even my face. I was like, I've never like, slap my legs or get aggressive and I was like I want this I want this so bad and so I told yeah. my partner I was like bump that shit up we're going for it like I'm gonna get it and he's like okay I trust you I'm like and that was the first time too like I was super I've never been so involved with my attempts I always trust my coach like hey if I miss it like we got to do it again you know but yeah. I was super involved with all my attempts and it felt really good to take ownership a little bit like no I can do it just like trust me I'm going to go out there, different game face. Like we're going to get it. And then even with bench, like bench, I did want to stay safe because I did miss it. And it was a bit of a grinder. So that one, I was a safe call, but for deadlifts, I'm like, go all in. Like I, my goal has always been to do 424 and it was, it was great. It was awesome. Yeah. Like on bench, you, you, you open 110, you miss 117.5 on your second and then mm -hmm. came out and grinded it out on your third. And I remember mm -hmm. There wasn't a huge crowd there, but I do remember that like the people were going nuts for that bench, you know, because it, because you, again, it was like, I think everyone was rooting for you because you, whenever you ha like sort of portray yourself in a certain way and you have this energy, people want to see you just succeed, you know, and like, they mm -hmm. want to see like the superstar do the superstar things. And, um, yeah. so, so yeah, like you, you hit that 117 grinder on bench and then just came out and blew up all your deadlifts and had yourself a hell of a day. Yes, and then Disney. I'm just keep yeah, bringing and it up. Straight, and then, and then Disney. went straight to Disney. Um, but then what did you think? Uh, uh, also, just about the competition and like how it was ran and like how the venue and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, no! It was such a super organized nationals. It was, I loved it. The vibe, like the people were super sweet. Um, the judges, like I think a lot of fair calls. I don't think anything was like, like unfair when it came to the judges. Um. Other than that, the venue was great. Competition ran smooth. And I will say the only thing that I guess did bug me was on the live stream. They kept saying my last name wrong. They, they, you know, that's hilarious. Um, because I remember I came and asked you because I was making a reel um, uh, from your lifts. And I was like, mm -hmm. is, this has to be a misspelling. And mm -hmm. I think it was in lifting cast wrong. Or something. Yeah, so... it, was in, it was in the computer wrong because it was it was coming up as like, what was it? What what were they calling you? It was like Vargas, but it was Var Varaz. Varaz. Oh yeah. Bella yeah. Varaz. And I'm like, I, I got like I was getting a ton of messages from my social work um group like program group chat and then like other people. And it was about my name. They're like, oh, they keep saying your name wrong or whatever. And I'm like, but I'm not I'm not on the live stream, but at the competition they were saying my name properly, Bella Vargas, whoever the announcer was. Okay. And yeah and i was like what my name they're saying it correctly so that confused me but then when i go back to live stream, i'm like oh my god I, that sounds terrible that's not my name and so but other than that the competition was perfect yeah. i everything ran smooth i had a good time the back was great i think even like for you like 
the tech with the videos like that was really awesome and very unique i've never really seen like you do you did it so quickly all the hype videos you're like yeah i can have this done in like in the afternoon just tell me your song and and you come up with this beautiful video and i'm like what the heck what an amazing memory of this competition i think you added that cherry on top like of the ice cream i'm a big ice cream person so um but you added that like that that like that um to the to the competition so that was really awesome of you to do i appreciate that yeah it's Mm -hmm. it's um it's Mm -hmm. fun and that's like one of the that's like one of our signature moves is to like um, try to get those reels out as quick as possible after competition and everything like that. But, um, shout out Scott Stratford. He, he got your name right in the room. I remember, um, because yeah, just looking at, I I think probably Julia was writing captions for me, um, remotely back, back uh, at her place. And I think she probably wrote it with that name Varaz or whatever. And I was like, that can't be right. Like, isn't your name Vargas? Like, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's always some little technical little thing or something like that that's just like, damn, you know, we like would have been a perfect day without that. But um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, it, it really you you were definitely a big star of the show. Um, definitely yourself and um, you know, some of the other lifters that Jasmine Barlow was there, like she put on a show on the equip day as well. Mm-hmm. I had herself a day and and yeah, it was it was super cool, super fun. Um, all right, so you hit PRs, you total 47.5. That's a 558 dots, which is just like ridiculous, crazy high dots. I'm just looking at your open powerlifting right now. And um, just um, looking at the nominations then in Romania. So this this was a day where you said, I mean, you said like there were some, some things that didn't go right, like in training leading up to it, you weren't as focused and things like that. And, but the 487.5 puts you over a hundred kilos ahead of the second place nominated person from Poland, uh, going oh, into lovely. Romania. I don't know. Have you looked at the nominations? No, I have. Not. <laughs> oh my God. Off. This is why I don't want to focus too much on others yeah. numbers. Again, like I've been repeating like myself, like it's about like, I'm focusing yeah. on myself and focusing on my numbers and my goals. And I'm there to have a good time. It's a new experience. It's a new platform for me. And like, yeah. I don't have like, my fam, my family's not flying out there. Like I don't have my coach there, you know. So it's completely new, and I'm working with the the USA team. And so, but when mm-hmm. I saw this post the other day about like, oh, 100 kgs over, I'm like, no freaking way am I 100 kg over. Like that's actually insane. That's a lie. And I'm like, I'm not gonna look at that. I'm not gonna focus on that because. Sorry. No, but you're good. Like I'm glad you're telling me this because I think it's. I honestly think it's insane. I didn't believe yeah. I was hundred kg over. Well, it's good to keep that energy because you never know. Like I said, countries play tricks, um, mm-hmm. especially the ones that are like really good at equipped, like Poland and some of these Eastern European countries, Romania is, is nominated in third in your class. So like they might be sandbagging their, their nominations, whatever, like you said, you can't, you can't let off the gas at all just because you have 120 kilo, uh, lead mm-hmm. on nominations. Um, but there is some interesting stuff. Like if you are able to replicate that same total, Mm -hmm. that would not only uh, win the weight class by probably a lot, um, just depending on what the other girls do, but based on nominations, you would actually finish in second place in the 63s and the 69s. Um, So like you're doing numbers here that I'm just saying these numbers to put it in the context of like, how ridiculously strong you are like you are strong enough to be competing two weight classes up for the silver medal um so my goodness yeah so so for people out there that think that they see the bow and they think she's you know she's she's a 57 that she's like you know just putting up some some small numbers here no you're putting up numbers that are good enough to compete multiple weight classes up um, which is a crazy thing. Like only a handful of women, you know, like in, in the open championships and things like that are putting up crazy numbers like that. Like you're in the ranks with like some of the, the greatest power lifters in the game right now on the women's side. So really cool. And you're I don't like, want to blow. You're like, after all that, really cool. That's yeah, really cool. I mean, I just <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I can't, I think it, I'm just can't wait to see like what you do. And then what's your prediction on the over under as far as like, um, going above 47.5 are, are is training feeling good yeah training I think my squats and my deadlifts are going really well I mean bench too but um for bench I'm just trying to be back at like 264 pounds for my bench 
my squat goals I'm trying to do a 402 pound squat and then deadlift like I mean I'm going for that record there's a record 442 pounds okay. and I'm I think I'm gonna go crazy so, okay. depending how my body's feeling and it's like you know what I, I'm just gonna go for it that's awesome. I, I mean, for anyone that's listening, like definitely tune in to see this. So, I mean, you, you did 47.5 way back when in Florida, um, you think 500 is on the table. Is it, is that, is that one of your goals to hit a 500 kilo total? I would love to hit a 500 kilo total. I think that would be amazing. That's a crazy accomplishment. And for my weight class too, like, I forget how small I am. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm 125 pounds. Like, that's crazy, you know, and yeah. I'm doing this. Way. Sometimes like I've just been doing it for so long. So it's just like, oh, like I'm talking and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm doing 400 some pounds at the gym or I'm doing a 200 some bench. And like to people, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Did you just hear what you just said right now? Like, yeah, look at you. You're small and you're picking up these numbers. That's insane. And so even for people that get the sport, it's like you're crazy. And it's like, I guess I'm crazy and I'm just having a good time with it. Yeah. I mean, and that's why, I mean, we're, we're really blessed to have you on our team. Um, pretty much a, a lock for a gold medal and, um, you know, and like very high in the running to win best lifter overall, which is huge for the team, um, and everything, but let's, um, you know, I mean, knock on wood, everything goes great. I mean, you get, you get a, a squat, a bench and a deadlift in, you're probably going to win. Um, so we just got to, you know, make sure to take care of business, make sure you get out mm -hmm. there safe and sound and, you know, get all the right, you know, fuel and stuff that you need for your body and then just handle business on the day. And, and I think the success mm -hmm. will come for sure. And hopefully you can do something crazy, put up a PR total, um, mm -hmm. even, even approaching your PRs on an international platform with the strictest refs, with all the travel and all the other things, the pressure, the, the knowing of all the people watching and whatnot. It's like, even if you approach PRs, that's a big deal on that stage. A lot of people aren't able to do it. So that'll be mm -hmm. cool. Um, all right. And then who are, so we kind of went over, those were some of your goals uh, for Romania. Who are some of the teammates that you have that you're looking forward to hanging out with and seeing them compete and cheer them on in Romania? Well, I'm missing my girl from Florida, Jasmine Barlow. So I thought it was really cool to meet her. She was super sweet and super funny and then like here and there we'll like dm each other so i'm really excited to see her on the platform and then i came across a raw 57 um Elaine, eleni um mm -hmm. i hope i'm saying her name right and so um but she's been putting on some big numbers on her training um she seems really precious and really funny and cool so i just like she's also dm'd me like just saying like my lips are crazy so um i think it's really i I just, I think it's really cool when people are reaching out to each other and it just makes me want to see them and hype them up even more and support them. And so those are the two top lifters. I'm really excited to watch on the platform and kick some butt. I know they're going to do amazing. They've been working so hard. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Jasmine has a lot of experience, actually. I think she went to junior worlds last year, or if not, she might've went to open worlds. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. she's been on the big stage before. Um, mm -hmm. She's a 43. And then like you said, Eleni is a 57 in the, on the uh, raw side of things. Um, and I'll say too, like, if you've never met Lola Sharame, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to pronounce, I always butcher her last name, but Lola, she's a 52. She probably lived in the same mm -hmm. day as you. She's super cool too. I think you're going to have a, a blast hanging out with her. She's like super awesome. fun. Person. Yeah. Yeah. Like you guys have a similar kind of like rock star energy, um, that I really like. And then, um, Aaron Anderson, the girl that I was mentioning before too, um, who did the board press that everyone like mm -hmm. lost their shit in the comments um she'll be up she'll be up uh, in the 69s and stuff and so yeah you'll get to meet some of the equipped squad a lot of these girls mm -hmm. like Aaron Anderson I see also Haley Lupo on the um in the 76s like they were all in Turkey last year at the world championships mm -hmm. as sub juniors and then they've moved into now the juniors um mm -hmm. and so and so they're like very young juniors and so it'll be cool yeah. for them to learn from you as being one of the older juniors one of the mm -hmm. biggest bosses, you know, and then, um, <laughs> and so you can rub off on them and vice versa. It's going to be a fun time. You're going to, you're going to make new friends for sure on the squad, on our yeah. squad. I'm super excited to meet, meet all the, the new people. Cause I mean, yeah. I've never really interacted with them on social media or like, I mean, I mean, if I haven't seen them on social media, then person obviously haven't, but I'm really excited to meet them 
and get yeah. to see their most heavy weights and especially the as equip squad just seeing how they're how their training has been and like what show they're going to put up on the platform definitely um and and like there's other bosses like i don't know where natalie estrada is from in the sub juniors mm -hmm. uh, but i mean like she's she's nominated like super far ahead um as mm -hmm. well in the sub junior so like they're just they're, we're bringing a really big squad of lifters um i know that everyone is all, always talking about Catherine cargill um she's from a powerlifting like royalty family in georgia and she's the youngest and so she's like the Whoa. superstar she's like the the you know the um what are they you know like the the treasure of the family you know the diamond yeah. of the family like the centerpiece yeah. and so like all the attention will be on her so I'm looking yeah. forward to her as a sub junior as well. So there's, there's so many good lifters on the equipped, on the mm -hmm. equipped women's team. It'll be fun. And then of course you'll meet people from other countries too. And so that was a really cool thing. I mentioned this on Monday night live on our live uh, episode that, um, in, a in the Cayman islands, we had a battle between two of our sub, a uh, sub junior American and a sub junior from Costa Rica, two girls, mm -hmm. and they were in like a tight battle and they were going head to head. And we were having a lot of fun, like shit talking with the coaches and stuff like of the Costa Rican team. And it was like very friendly, mm -hmm. fun. Um, and then um, the Costa Rican girl won. And then the rest of the week, you just saw they were like attached at the hip. Like they were like best friends, mm -hmm. like hanging out all the rest of the week. So it's just cool stuff about the sport, you know? That's awesome. But all right. So give us a little bit uh, into some of the background of uh, your, your background and how you got into lifting. And then um, mm -hmm. I'll ask you some quick hitters after that. And we'll wrap this up. So yeah, I looking at your open power thing, it goes hella deep. Like you started lifting as a 15 year old, I think in 2016. And this mm -hmm. is one of those Texas things where like, you got a ton of meets here that are from the Texas high school. Oh my gosh. Some of those yeah. numbers are crazy. Like, I mean, like yeah. baby weight. Um, no, but yeah, I started, well, one, I was a cheerleader for 10 years. And okay. so I, I was, so I was doing competitions and then just at my high school, elementary, middle school, all that good stuff. And so I was practicing uh, the cheer squad in high school. We were practicing in the cafeteria and little Bella being super competitive with the male cheerleaders. Um, there's a stunt called one man stunt man. And I was like, I bet I can do that. I bet I can pick up one girl by myself, like on my own. Like, I don't really need the support. Like I want to be like what the guys were doing. I didn't like the, what we're doing with the girls is also fun, but I, I want to be up there and like show off that like, I, I'm pretty strong, I think. So yeah. anyway, I ended up doing it at a practice and the football slash powerlifting coaches were walking by our practice and they saw me doing these stunts all by myself. And they're like, whoa, wait a minute. We're going to pull you off to the side. So they, they told me about the sport. They introduced me to powerlifting. They showed me the weight room and they're like, okay, now go home and ask your mom to see if you can join the team. So anyway, I go home, tell my mom about the sport. And she's like, absolutely not. You are not going to do powerlifting. You're going to look so buff. You're going to look masculine. Like, no, yeah. we don't need that. And I'm like, dang it. So anyway, at the end of that school year, um, I was at the varsity banquet because I also did cross country and track at the time. So I was involved in many sports and extracurriculars in high school. But um, my mom saw the varsity powerlifting girls walking by and she's like, oh my God, look at their legs, look at their arms. They're so toned, they look so good. You gotta join it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, just because they look amazing, I'll mm -hmm. join the sport, mom. So anyway, my sophomore year in high school, I signed up for the powerlifting class because that was offered at our high school, but that doesn't mean you're automatically on the team. You gotta like earn the spot. So I was last pick my sophomore year <laughs> to be on the team and, um, I surprised my coaches. They didn't count me for points for regionals and state. And I finished off my sophomore year fifth place. I surprised myself. I didn't even think I was going to qualify for state. It was, um, uh -huh. I had to, I had to grind out a 315 at regionals for deadlifts in order to qualify. So anyway, I did good sophomore year fifth place and then junior year got third and then finished off my high school career state champion. And then got recruited onto the UT Longhorn powerlifting team to compete um, at UT and then um, competed all throughout my collegiate career, got a couple national titles, was recruitment chair and was the female co-president. But my biggest message about recruitment chair was not just looking at your strength. I want to see like overall you, like, are you going to like, are you going to be a good candidate for our team? Like, are you going to like be okay with school? Like, what are you doing outside of powerlifting? You know, cause I always 
emphasize that you're, you're a student athlete first and um, but how can I support you because UT can be pretty pricey and so supporting students like with financial aid and like other services so using a little bit of my social work practice with student athletes and it's been great it was a it's been an awesome run I've been doing it for a couple of years but now that I'm in the grad program I'm competing as an individual and but I still have wonderful support from my partner and my coach and people that aren't in equip lifting at the gym supporting me hyping me up and eager to learn more about equip lifting and so that's why I continue to do it and it just and it's been fun it's been awesome what do you think um, your advice would be like for someone like like a young girl like yourself, like doing cheerleading um, and you're in high school and you're like maybe a, a freshman or a sophomore? Like what are the benefits that you think powerlifting can offer someone um, at that age? Because that can be like a very volatile age. There's like a lot of insecurities mm-hmm. at that age. Like you're very um, you know, a- aware of like what other people think about you and your appearance mm-hmm. and things like that. How yeah. do you think powerlifting can play a positive role? I, for me personally, it just brought out this different confidence out of me. And, um, and I just want to encourage girls, like if you're thinking about joining the sport of powerlifting, like your, your mental, like your, your mental, like, or how can I say this for, how can I word this? But for me, it brought out confidence and I want those girls to also have that same confidence and it's going to help them like maybe with their mental health or just like strength wise and just feeling like a powerhouse when they're walking down the hallways. And so my goal is just for like girls to be comfortable and confident, like in their own skin and like being able to help girls like increase their self-efficacy, like believing in their own abilities that they can do what they want to do. And so I think proud thing is such a wonderful sport because it, it like there's, it's all about consistency, discipline, like look being aware of like your eating habits and just like you're focused on you and but at the same time you're still in a team environment and like how do you also pour out that message in that team environment that way it's it's all a good positive environment for them but for yourself it's like you're you're working on just wonderful things for yourself your your strength and then like your mental health and it's it's great it's awesome that's really well said i couldn't say it any better so we'll just leave it at that but that was that was really good um, I, we've been getting this story a lot, you know, about how powerlifting helped people get through tough times, mental, yeah. time, you know, mentally tough times and things like this. There's so much about what it can do for your, for your mental strength and your mental health mm-hmm. as, a, uh, and, and also obviously your physical strength as well. Um, tell us a little bit about lift ATX and what the vibe is like over there. Vibes are always amazing and high. They're so awesome. I love yeah. the crew. I love, um, Daniel, who is the owner of the gym, like he's treated me like family ever since I stepped foot into that gym. I remember I was super nervous to train there the first time because all I saw were these buff, tall men with tons of tattoos on their arms and they're watching this itty bitty girl on a bench. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, Sandra, like this is scary. Like these are all buff men and they're all like watching me and I'm scared. But no, other than that, like they've treated me like family, like they're super supportive, even like, um, some other everyday gym goers like um like they're on the raw side they do they do compete and it's really awesome to see that they're eager to want to learn more about equip lifting and like asking me questions like how should I like hold the board for you or how should I spot you or like do you need help with your wraps or do you need help with your straps and your belt and it's just it's they're so supportive and they really do mean it like when they say um strength and community and community and strength like it's just you feel the sense of belonging, you feel welcome there. I mean, that's why I keep going all the time, because I think this is the first gym where I felt 100% myself, and I can wear my bows, I can glam up even at the gym. And like, I'm like, I'm still picking up heavy weight. And it's, it's awesome that like, people are still like supporting me while I'm lifting. It seems like a really fun place. Like I follow their it's Instagram super account. Fun. And yeah, like, like you guys, they're always pumping out a ton of content too. Like they're mm-hmm. really good with like, they're posting videos like every day. Um, mm-hmm. looks like they're trying to always grow the place and make it bigger and better and stuff. So looks like a fun place. If you're ever out in Austin, definitely stop swing through, um, stop by over there. We host mm-hmm. a lot of meets in Austin. So that's one of the gyms that people can go and get their last training session in or, or whatever, whenever we're hosting a meet out there. Um, speaking of which we're going to be hosting ben- the bench press world championships in Austin, mm-hmm. uh, next year. So like, we're actually hosting that it'll be in Austin. 
Um, I believe also bench nationals is also in Austin, um, earlier mm -hmm. in the year. And so we'll be out in Austin a few times. So if any of our athletes are hearing this, you want a fun, super fun gym lift ATX is a good one. Maybe you'll run into Bella. So, yeah. All right. Um, let me, let's finish off with some quick hitter questions. Just like get to know you type stuff. Um, we already hit on like where, you, what your day job is. What's your day job at lift ATX? What do you do over there? I'm a part-time employee, so I'll be doing closing shifts for the weekend. Yeah, because okay. during the week I'm in school, and then I have my other job um, as a graduate assistant with an office called Texas Lead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then we mentioned already where you train, Lift ATX. Do you also train on campus? Is there a good powerlifting gym on campus? Um, well, not really. I don't like training on campus because yeah. it's just so many gym bros and I'm like yeah. no I don't want to deal with that so um, I think Lift ATX is a really good place for me just because it's really close to campus and then they just got the right equipment that I need so I where just does, prefer going there where does the UT team uh tra train at yeah so the UT Austin team well we used to train here but then Texas Athletics bought out our space thank you Texas Athletics for doing that and um, now they train at game day which is fairly okay. close to Lift ATX too. So both gyms are wonderful. So if you're in the Austin area, highly recommend checking out both. I think they're really cool. We also got Big Techs and Liberation in the Austin area. Yeah, Liberation yeah. is cool. Um, home Barbell, I've heard. Of. Oh yeah, Home Barbell, Game yeah. Home has AC, which I think other places don't. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, like like Game Day is there. There's so many so many great gyms around there. But just kind of into like what what kind of vibe you're into as well um mm -hmm. lift atx definitely seems like the the fun one like the fun place just based oh, yeah, on like the social media all the music carlos behind the scene um carlos um behind the scenes of all our videos he does such an amazing job but the vibes yeah. are all, are so much fun like you're dancing you're jamming i mean some people are trying to be in and out so i get that but i mean mm -hmm. sometimes people like they want to socialize while they're training and that's definitely. what i like to do a little bit and it's it's awesome they're super super fun people to be around yeah. Strength and community. I think that's a big, that's a really important part of it. So they, they definitely nail that. Um, where did you grow up? Yes. Yeah, so I'm from the Valley. I'm from Brownsville, Texas. And then I went to Los Fresnos high school. When is that in Brownsville? Um, the Valley is like all different border towns. So it's okay. the, it's the tip of Texas, South of Texas, and it's all border towns. Um, and we call it the Valley. Mm -hmm. and there's just different small towns if for reference i'm pretty close to south pudger island i'm like about a okay. 40 minute drive but i'm from a town called brownsville and the border town to that of mexico is matamoros but i okay. went to school in another small town called los Fresnos. so it's like all back to back um border towns all squished together and so it's a tight-knit community and they also got bomb ass tacos down there you can't beat I the bet. tacos from the valley like austin like it's not it y'all if y'all want tacos don't come to austin like you gotta go <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry i'm familiar with matamaros one of my uh journalism friends is, is down in that area quite a bit covering mm -hmm. border border related stories and whatnot but oh, um, that's cool but um what was your first sport um cheerleading. cheerleading or no actually no gymnastics it was gymnastics and then I went into cheerleading mm -hmm. okay cool yeah. yeah I mean a lot of our powerlifting athletes did other sports and on the women's mm -hmm. side a couple people now have mentioned you know gymnastics and then cheerleading mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so which cheerleading is a, is a sport too um it's like I yes. think depending on where you you're at like um different regions of the country they take it more seriously but like, mm -hmm. I know Ellis McLean is like one of the cheer coaches for Texas A&M and like, they do like hardcore workouts and like all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, it's a very serious sport as well. Oh, yeah. So. Cheerleading is super serious uh, and it is a sport. So yeah, I started off with gymnastics, the cheerleading, then did cross country, did track and then powerlifting. So yeah, I've been in well-rounded well everywhere. <laughs> exactly maybe we'll race in romania we'll see how fast you are i'll beat you i'll beat you <laughs> i i want to bet on that that'd be amazing <laughs> all right cool we might have to organize a race uh we'll see who <laughs> who wants to get smoked um but um i'm just joking i'm not that fast <laughs> and i'm old but um all right when you're not powerlifting what's your idea of a good time 
Um, I like to host kickbacks, so hanging out with my friends and then just like socializing with them. Um, I'm a big arts and crafts girly. I like to sew. I'm an old granny by heart, so I have my cute little sewing machine and do a lot of DIY stuff at my apartment or hanging out with my doggy. Um, her name's Conchita. I named her um, after the pan dulce conchas. So if you're not familiar with conchas, search it up. It's amazing. They're awesome. It's super good with coffee. But yeah, I named her Conchita and I just love hanging out with my baby. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's basically it. I don't do anything crazy outside of proud things. I just like to relax. But arts and crafts like is my biggest thing at home. Okay. And um, if you go on vacation, do you prefer to go someplace that has beaches or mountains or does that not matter? Mm, I think I do love beaches because I do love tanning. So yeah, I think okay. beach definitely number one, but I'm also a city girl because I love to dress up with my cute blaze, my oversized blazers, trying to do like cute little nineties looks. So I don't know if y'all <laughs> can tell, but I'm through this conversation, but I'm pretty big on fashion. That's why I do like to doll up when I do compete, but super big about fashion. So when I'm in a city, I'm like, we're going all out. Like I will pack 30 outfits. You're going to think I'm crazy for my May master. I packed about 30 outfits and I fit that in a small carry on suitcase and another small, I had two small carry on suitcases and I fit 30 outfits. That's awesome. And a ton of blazers. So, but those are, so, yeah, very different vibes, beach tanning city, like dressing up. Okay. So mountains are just not, nah, don't, you know, Oh, but they're beautiful. The mountain, like I love, I do love me a good hike too, but all right. They're just, it depends on the city too, but Very well-rounded here. Mm -hmm. yeah um, and hopefully we'll see will, will we see some of the oversized blazers in romania uh, like, i'm debating and after? I'm, I'm debating like for for sure the banquet i got a cute dress that has a ton of bows on it um okay. and then i'm i mean i'm gonna be in the hotel chilling so it's like do i really need to bring a blazer but we'll see we'll see what i'll dress up i'm i might do like cute cozy like dress up type outfits but we shall see all right, we'll 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 have to document the fashion. Um, we can we can also put a phone in your hand and you can document other people's fashion and you can you can uh, yes. give feedback on how good or not not very well they're dressed. Probably me, um, but yeah, we can do so, a we can do a hot and not. Type yeah, of thing. let's do a hot and not. That'll be hilarious. And and we can let's get some um, insights on the Romanian fashion. We'll see what's up over there. Like it probably might just be straight up Euro style stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll see so yeah we'll that's like my favorite thing about traveling it's always being inspired by people's different looks and yeah. like how they like why they put those certain color combos together so that's always my biggest thing but yeah. when I'm traveling so I'm really excited to see like what's their fashion like when I'm over there yeah I studied fashion before as well and so like I'm I'm super into it as well so we'll we'll have fun to like uh people watch and comment on, okay. on what the fashion is going to be like for sure so also make sure you bring enough of the essential foods and things like that, that you need. Don't worry about the blazer if, it, if yeah. you don't have room, um, especially because I know the extra bags, fees and all that stuff is crazy. Mm -hmm. It'll add up. Um, but okay. Um, no, quick couple of last uh, questions here. What's, do you have a nickname? Um, do you just go by Bella? I, I'll go by Bellini. My, Bellini. Yeah. Bellini. Okay. Or people call me Bella Bo Benches. So they'll always use my username. They're like Bella Bo or Bella Bo. Okay. And what else? Or yeah, or sometimes like the girl, like Bo Girl or Fear the Bo. Bo Girl. All right. Let's go, Bo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, who is a person that you look up to in powerlifting or in strength sports? Like people that inspired you when you're coming up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my number one person is Ian Bell. He is my best friend. He used to be my powerlifting coach. And um, he's also, he also got his master's in social work. So he inspired me to also get my master's in social work. But he's not just inspiring to me, like in just powerlifting, I think in just all aspects of life, like with his fashion and like the way he talks to people, like how he's empathetic and a very amazing listener and just the biggest teddy bear like when you see him like he's a tough looking scary dude big ass muscles but when you talk to him it's like he's just the sweetest person in the world and so I like but with strength it's like if he has an injury or if he's not going or if he's not doing well mentally like 
he still figures out a way to challenge himself and to get it done and that like and that's what inspires me it's like if I'm doing bad like I need to go to the gym and like maybe let off some steam or just get the job done too because this is also important to my everyday life and schedule um another person is my coach Sandra Sebastian she is just a Latina powerhouse but um sweetest person ever and just so like aware and attentive to like your lifts and very caring of like how you're going to succeed and then like besides from paddling she knows how to have a fun time outside of the sport like we'll go get a drink we'll go get some tacos we'll go get some good food and it's just fun to have like like just being next to her she's just a good ball of just good energy and I just want to be with her 24 7 but I know she won't allow that because I'll drive her crazy (laughs) so I won't do that too Sandra and then Mario Mario's an awesome powerlifter too like um he's just he's been doing it for so long he's gone to worlds multiple times and he's inspired me like in the equip lifting like when it comes to like his technique and um and I also know he has things going on too and but other than that like he still gets the job done and it's just all three of them are just amazing in in different ways and they like these are the biggest people that I look up to when it comes to the sport of powerlifting that's really cool. I, I met Mario a little bit last week and a little bit in Scottsdale, but I don't really know him that well. But Ian Bell, mm-hmm. I've heard everybody raves about him. I met his dad several times, hung out with him a oh little bit. Oh my God, his dad is amazing. He's so yeah. funny. He always sends me the randomest memes. And I'm like, and I had to message Ian, can you confirm why he sent me this? Because this hilarious. makes no sense. Yeah, we got to up his Instagram game a little bit. But um, but no, he's... it's perfect. It's perfect. You better <laughs> leave it like it's beautiful we're not changing it he is his authentic self and we're gonna leave it because it's perfect all right well, all right i won't i won't message him anything but yeah he gene is awesome and so i can only imagine ian's gonna be really cool and i look forward to meeting sandra sometime too hopefully mm-hmm. she'll be at some power in america nationals or something this in, mm-hmm. in the next year or whatever we can meet mm-hmm. um, okay a couple more questions here um do you do accessories or are accessories overrated Oh my God, accessories are not overrated. If you're skipping them, you're crazy. You have to get them done. Like they are going to help your main lift. But my favorite ones is curls because like my veins are just popping. I'm like, yes, oh my God, I look tougher than this guy right next to me. But like, <laughs> he, but it doesn't matter. Like I shouldn't have those little mini competitions. It's just all in my head. It's like, I'm going to yeah. beat him. Yeah, so, no, I love that. The little so things love, that fuel you. Yeah, so I love curls because my veins are just, popping like crazy i love belt squats that's a good accessory and then i love larson press as well Mm -hmm. yeah those are my favorites all right cool and um what's your favorite sport to watch do you ever watch any other sports um i like soccer soccer is pretty fun or football like i say football but like i mean soccer but i didn't know if i should say football but yeah soccer is really fun um to get like people like i don't have that many friends that watch soccer so I don't like do a lot of watch parties, but with my family here and there, I like, it's a good sport to watch. It's really fun. Like it's like your adrenaline going. Cause it's just so crazy back and forth. For oh, sure. and gymnastics and gymnastics, such a wonderful sport to watch. It's amazing. Those girls, what they can do. It's crazy. All right, cool. What about, um, music? What's your favorite music genre? Ah, <sighs> um, I'm all over the place like right now. Um, but my go-to, like just growing up, I'm all about sad alternative music with like, <laughs> gotta be like, let's make this depressing. Um, <laughs> acoustic, acoustic piano, like more people like that have more raspier voices and lower tones when they sing. Um, I don't okay. know, like I guess alternative or yeah, I guess that's the genre. But right now I'm listening to a lot of rap. Like Nicki Minaj has been having my back at training. And Kanye, like they've both been talking to me in my ear when it comes to like pulling my lifts or benching, squatting. So yeah, Nikki and Kanye are right up there right now. Okay. And raspy voice, alternative music. Got it. All right. And you definitely have like a little nineties vibes. Um, and that's definitely the kind of music that was like big in the nineties, like sad Mm -hmm. alternative, like you're saying. Um, Mm -hmm. all right. This will be the last one is what about, um, like movie genres, what kind of movies and Mm -hmm. stuff do you like? Rom-coms. My wow. rough, my favorite all time movie is Dirty Dancing. I don't care what you say. All right. Dirty Dancing and then Titanic. And then I love The Breakfast Club because it's just in like one setting. I love one setting movies. 
I know that's pretty cheesy, but I don't care. I love when Harry met Sally. So maybe that gives you all like the vibe, like where are, I like, I like older movies. I, these like, are all old. I yeah. I was going to say like, you're kind of an old head for sure. Yeah. That's what all my friends make fun of me. They're like, Oh, you're the grandma of our group. And it's like, I'm literally one year older than you, or we're literally the same age. Like, you're but like knitting a sweater and trying to watch like dirty dancing and stuff like that's oh whole... yeah oh I've definitely done that I've definitely made something with my sewing machine and like I have dirty dancing in the background because it's a comfort movie so you I nailed that <laughs> you said that right on the dot that's hilarious all right well is there anyone that you want to thank or any sponsors or anything that you want to shout out like before we turn this off mm -hmm. I want to shout out my gym lift ATX for supporting me 100% just like with my training and just being there for me um, shout out to my coach, Sandra Sebastian, for being patient with me, just showing me uh, endless love and care when it comes to my training as well. My partner, Eric, for being the greatest um, human ever. Uh, my, my friend, Ian Bell, I know he's in Japan right now for work, but, you know, from afar, he's always been supportive with my studies and training. And, and also my, my other friend, Daniel. Yeah. Because right. he's been like helping and Daniel because he's been helping me with my move um, to my apartment and also with my training and just has been here for me lately. So it's been really nice. Awesome. All right, Bella. Well, we're going to let you go. Um, we can't wait to see what you do um, at, in Romania. And we're just like a week out now or, or even yeah, about a week out. So it should be really exciting. Um, we're all, you know, really proud of you and we know you're going to represent the USA really strong in Romania. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for everyone that listens to the Power of America podcast. And with that, we are out of here. Peace.